The American economy was built on a foundation of family businesses, names like Ford, Morgan, and Vanderbilt, etched into our history books. But Yingling? That's the name of a German immigrant who arrived here nearly 200 years ago with a dream to quench the country's thirst. That dream turned into the country's oldest brewery. ABC's David Wright takes us there for this morning's American Snapshot. It's hard to believe that tiny Pottsville, Pennsylvania, population 14,000, was ever a boom town. But 180 years ago, it was. That's why David G. Yingling, like many German immigrants in 1829, made his way to Pottsville. Back then, coal was king, and Pottsville was a coal mining capital. All those miners were bound to be thirsty. So Yingling, a brewer by trade, opened a brewery. The coal boom has long since gone bust in Pottsville, but the brewery and the beer remain. We do about three to 350 to 400,000 barrels a year out of here. Dick Yingling is David's great-great-great-grandson, still running the company his beer-making ancestor founded. Yingling took us on a personal tour of the brewery he bought from his father 25 years ago. You bought the company? Oh, I bought the company from my father, yes. We always, we don't give anything away here. <laughs> the Yinglings are famously thrifty. Some would say downright cheap. But that's helped them to hang on, even as many other regional breweries went out of business. Now I know where the expression, it smells like a brewery comes from. Uh, it does that. It smells good to me. I don't know about other people. Old fashioned doesn't even begin to describe some of the equipment you see here. But that's part of what gives Yingling its charm. Above the main kettle, there's a stained glass window. And we had a copper kettle here years ago. And the sun, when the sun had come beat through the, the light up there, it would bounce off the copper kettle and blind everybody. Yingling hasn't just survived, it has thrived. Through clever marketing and old-fashioned elbow grease, the company is now competing on a national scale. We're, we're now the second largest brewer in the United States, uh, and we're only a couple thousand barrels behind Samuel Adams, which sells his beer throughout 50 states, and we're only in 13. Despite its size, Yingling is still run like a small family business. Dick is a very non-conventional CEO. I mean, as you saw yourself, he won't put a suit and tie on unless he rents one for a wedding. And he's very active in his company. He loves it. Nice to meet you. Thanks, sir. Come yes, sir. Yingling is so popular, people make pilgrimages to Pottsville just to visit the factory. Please stay in front of our kettles as you're walking around. The daily tours are a lesson in beer making history. Beer has to be kept refrigerated. And, and back in 1829 and the early 1800s, there was no uh, electricity and there was no way to refrigerate anything. So breweries were built into the side of a mountain and then they dig tunnels. The tunnels were reopened recently after being shut down years ago. Now these brick walls are here because during Prohibition they made us seal off these caves on that side. Prohibition brought tough times for the Yinglings, who briefly started an ice cream business instead. Now, of course, they're back into beer big time. The name Yingling is German for young man, but the Yinglings have no more young men to carry on the tradition, just young women. What point do you think you'll be ready to pass on the reins? Well, I hope soon. I'm 66, and, uh, you know, I'd like to take some time off in the winter time. The more he gets us involved in things, the more I appreciate the knowledge that he has and that he shares with us. We're getting there, but uh, we're not ready for him to vacation in Florida full time yet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he is either. <laughs> the label still says Yingling and Son, but it probably ought to say Yingling and Daughters. For Good Morning America, David Wright, ABC News, Pottsville, Pennsylvania.